Right. Am I hurting your image doing if this way? Right? Yeah, thank you. Oh, Swag. Oh, you got Swag. You got Swag. <laughs> you got you got <laughs> we are the Strivers Row. Hi, I'm Alicia Harris. Hi, I'm Zora Howard. What's up? Carvin Slasant. I'm Jasmine Mans. Greetings. Joshua Bennett. Miles Hodges. Tupac Shakur has the most influence on me. Like, I'm talking about Tupac from when he was like 18, 16, so like up to the moment he died, where like he was like, he was like in an interview and he was like, yo, if anybody says anything to me, I'm taking my chains off and I'm about to kick your ass. And then like as he got older, he's like, yo, if I die, tell people that like I, I, was, I was good and that I changed. And like you see, like he represents like this totality of humanity for me. Yeah. And like the uglies and the most beautiful parts about what being a black man with like a microphone means and what it may feel like. Uh, I mean, as far as poets, in terms of I saw them perform and I can remember my style actually changing, probably Anis Mojgani um, when I was a freshman in college. Yeah. And then um, later all in college, uh, Andrea Gibson. Um, and then, I don't know, as far as artists, Kendrick Lamar is the, the most Kendrick prominent Lamar. contemporary influence on anything I'm, I'm thinking about yeah. in terms of the relationship between lyric and life. Um, and Connor Oberst, believe it or not, I'm a big Bright Eyes fan. And, um, his, his writing is, is always deeply political and reflective in, in a way that I seek to emulate. So, yeah. um, In terms of, <clears throat> I don't know, I've... It's just been recently where I've actually considered myself a writer because I yeah. don't write for the page. I write for for the sake that someone will say it out loud. Um, <clears throat> for me, the spoken word existed but way before the written word. And uh, I mean, even when I and it really became apparent to me when I really started to study a lot of Shakespeare, and uh, we realized that it wasn't a dictation like iambic pentameter. It was a dictation. It was it was an observation. The reason why they spoke like that, the reason why there was an accent on each and every single word, because there was an emotion behind it, and there was um, a wantingness to try to communicate something. So for me, I don't necessarily write for I don't write for the page, and I think that's very different for a couple of us. I know some of us like they they love the page. For me, I need things to be said out loud. Um, it's also something about a declaration of being able to speak something into existence. But in terms of inspiration, I mean, we can go all day from like Saul Williams to a Buddy Wakefield to a Andrea Gibson to a Mahogany Brown to a Jive Poetic to a John Sands to a, all of these amazing poets from New York and from across the country, you know. Um, Katz, Ken Arkine, you know, we can go on for days. Uh, but I think as of late, um, because I, I'm, I'm an actor and, and I, I love this, uh, this marriage between uh, poetry and beautiful language and, and theater, um, there are theater artists who I love, like folks like Lemon Anderson and, uh, and uh, uh, Daniel Beattie yeah, and uh, right. Mark Bamuthi Joseph. Um, there's something about adding the theatrical uh, training and element to uh, this this body of, of, of words that we use. So a lot of my inspiration and in readings more so have been, as of late, just Shakespeare and uh, Greek tragedy. I just love the process of writing and having it to share, to be read. Um, so particular poets that uh, work both ways, that work on the page and work um, in performance as well. I really enjoy um, two favorite poets, are Gwen Brooks and, mm. and Nikki Giovanni. Um, I feel like every time I read their poems, it's a little bit of this, and every time um, I read them out loud, I get the same feeling. Um, so I'm always looking for poets who can, um, who, who embody that for me. Um, I guess for me, I care about the page more than, I care about the, the page is everything to me. Um, it's everything. I mean, when I got into spoken word, I refused to memorize my poems. And it was like, it wasn't that I couldn't memorize them. It was just like a very important thing that I saw the words, so that I saw the words on the page. I like the classics. I like I like Ernest Hemingway. I have a picture of Dostoevsky over my bed. Like I, for I mean for me, like Ernest Hemingway was the, wrote the truest that ever to ever do it to ever write. He was the I can't even talk about him. I'm gonna name my daughter after him. Like that's just how I feel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then. <laughs> Not Ernest. Not Ernest. 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 But, um... <laughs> I like Ernest. 
But uh, in general, I think also I really like contemporary page poets. I'm in an MFA program right now, so we read a lot of uh, people that are producing work primarily or only for the page. So Jory Graham, I love her. Her first book of uh, hybrids of plants and of ghosts was by far the best book of poetry I've ever read, ever, hands down. Um, Terrence Hayes, I like a lot. Um, in terms of editing, uh, Elizabeth Bishop, the the best to like just sit down and like literally edit a poem. Her poem One Art, there's 17 drafts of that poem, and each poem looks remarkably different. And you can tell how she went from something that was like a rough idea to like an actual masterpiece. Oh, and Ann Carson. My oh my God, how did I forget this woman? Ann Carson. Oh, wow. She not only is are her poems amazing, but her essays, her dissertation, Eros, the Bittersweet, was like the most profound articulation of want and desire and love that I've ever read in my life. And especially as a poet, which we write so much about desire, like even not just romantic desire, but just desire for change, desire for like, I don't know, some kind of utopian world. Like she, she articulates why that is and how literature and reading influence that and change that and manipulate our brains. And I was like, oh my God. This is me. This is who I am. Like, and it was just wonderful. So everyone should read that book, especially if you're an artist, because it will it will change your life.